Hi uh, guys, Mike here from Comp3 Interactive. Welcome back to the channel. Today is another viewer request. As some of you may have already seen, I've done a 3D field of view tutorial and I've had a few requests to, as to how you would actually put that in a 2D perspective. So instead of making you go and watch that video and then come and watch this and change your script, we're just going to rewrite that script, but for 2D. So if you've already watched the 3D tutorial, a lot of this stuff is going to be quite repetitive. But for those who haven't seen that tutorial, this is just going to go from A to B and you're going to be able to add a field of view, cone of view, field of vision, whatever you want to call it, to a 2D sprite. It's going to be looking for a specific object, so the player, and we're also going to take into consideration any obstructions like walls getting in the way. So just before we carry on, I just want to thank Gigatank3000 for sponsoring this video. I've got his links down in the description below. Go check him out on Twitter. Go check out his website. Keep up to date with what the guy is doing. All right, so let's hop on over into Unity and we'll get started. All right, so here we go. We have a few objects in the scene already. Let me just walk you through it. So we've got the green square, which is going to act as a player object. That's just got a box collider attached to it. Now to do this, you are going to need colliders because we're going to be using ray casting and uh, circle casting as well. So obviously if you've used ray casting before, you know that that only interacts with objects with colliders. Bear that in mind. So that's our player. We've also got a similar setup with this uh, red cube over here. This is going to be our enemy. And just so you can get a kind of a feel for the direction, I've added this... Uh, protrusion which is going to denote the forward facing angle and then finally we've just got this white rectangle in the middle which is just going to be a wall all right so let's get started let's create our script call it field of view and we'll open it in visual studio all right so we'll get rid of our update and the comment there so there's going to be a few variables that we need to add in here. So first of all, we're going to need our radius, which is the radius around the enemy in which that enemy will be able to see the player. So let's add a public float radius, and we'll set that to 5 by default. Next, we're going to need a public float again, which is going to be the angle in which our enemy can view. So we're going to have a circle around the radius of our enemy, and then within that circle, there's a defined angle in which the enemy can see. So by default, we're going to set that to 45. And what we can do with angle, like we did in the 3D tutorial, we can add a range attribute to this. So we can set this between 1 degree and 360 degrees, because obviously you can't have more than a 360 degree field of view. Next, we want a couple of layer masks. Now, these are going to be one for the player, so the target object that we're looking for, and we're also going to want another layer, which are going to be the obstruction layers. So again, let's add these in. So that'll be a public layer mask, target layer, and a public layer mask, obstruction layer. We're going to want a reference to our player, so that's going to be a public game object, player ref. Now, in this tutorial, we aren't going to use that variable as such, but that's the variable that you'd be using if you were to be, for example, using a nav mesh and you're going to be chasing the player. You're going to need a reference to him to get a reference to the transformed opposition. So that's where that'll come into play. And finally, we need a public bool can see player. And we're going to make this a property with a public get, so anything can access this but a private set, so nothing else can set that variable apart from this field of view script. All right, so let's just start by caching that player ref value. So we can just set player ref equal to game object dot find game object with tag player. We've all done that before, nice and simple. And now to actually make this a little bit more performant, instead of running this field of view check on every frame like we would if we did it in update, what we'll do, we'll do it in a core routine so we can control how often we send that signal out to check for the player. So let's start that off with a private IE numerator, and we'll just call it FOV check. We'll set up a wait for seconds, 
weight equals new weight per seconds, 0.2. So we're only going to check if the play is in view every 0.2 of a second. So that's going to be five calls per second as opposed to one every frame, which could potentially be 60 frames per second upwards. And then we'll set up an infinite loop by doing while true, we're going to yield return wait, which is going to wait 0.2 of a second. And then we're just going to create a separate function to actually do the field of view action. So I'm just going to call that FOV this time. And we'll create that down here. So that's private void FOV. And then just before we go any further, we want to make sure that we start that core routine in our start method. So we'll call start core routine FOV check inside of that start method. And now the first thing we want to do when we're doing this field view check, we want to check for any colliders on our target layer. So let's do that. So this is going to be a collider 2D array. I'm going to call this range check. I'm going to set this equal to physics 2D dot overlap circle all which instead of ray casting, it's going to ray, ray cast a circle around our enemy. And we want to start that from the center point of the enemy. So that's going to be the transform dot position. Next, we want our radius. So we're going to pass in the radius that we've set up in the inspector. And then finally, we want the layer mask. So this is our target. So we're going to pass in the target layer. So there we go. We've passed out that circle cast. Now we want to check if there's anything in that array, the collision array. So we'll check if range check dot length is greater than zero. That means there's a target within range. So let's cache that first transform. So we'll just do a local transform there. Target equals range check. And we'll grab the first object that it found dot transform. Next, we want to get the direction to that target in regards to our enemy's position. So that's going to be a vector two, direction two target is equal to our target's position, target dot position, minus our enemy's transform dot position. And we're going to normalize that. So dot normalized. The next check we've got to do is we've got to make sure that the player or the target that has been selected is within the angle of our viewing angle. You remember the graph from before, the little chart before? We want to be inside that V shape. So we'll check if vector2.angle, and we'll just use transform.up as our starting angle, and then our direction to target as our second. And we're going to check if that angle is less than the angle that we've set up in the inspector divided by two. Now, the reason we're doing that is because obviously we're going straight up. We've got a say 45 degree angle. So that's going to be 22.5 degrees on the left side of that and 22.5 on the right. So we divide that by two, we can get that angle. So if that statement passes and we're within the field of view angle, we want to check the distance. And the reason we're checking the distance is because when we do the final ray cast to make sure there's nothing in the way, we don't want to do that forever. We only want to reach where we know our player is. So let's set a float distance to target. And this is really simple. This is just vector2.distance between the transform.position, so our enemy's position, and our target.position. Then finally, we can do that obstruction ray cast. So this is just going to be if physics 2 d dot raycast uh, origin is the transform dot position so our enemy's position the direction is the direction to target the distance is the distance to target and then we're going to make sure that we pass in that obstruction layer as the layer mask so if all that is true then we can set can see player equal to true and now we're going to have to go back through all these if statements and then set can see player to false if they don't pass. So if our ray cast hits an obstruction layer, we know that we can't see the player. So can see player is false on that if statement. If the player isn't within our angle, so else on that if statement, 
can see player is false. And then on the last one, we don't want to set it to false every time we run this. So we can just do an else if can see player, then we'll do can see player equals false here too. So if the range check is actually zero, so we can't see the player, but in the previous iteration we could, we'll make sure that we set can see player to false and then that won't run anymore. If you noticed a little bit of a cut there, that's because I noticed I did something wrong and it was something extremely simple. Where we have this physics raycast, we want to make sure that that is not true. So we need to add the exclamation mark at the start of it. Because what this is going to do, this is going to check whether or not it's hitting this object on this layer. If it doesn't hit it, then we can see the player. So follow it exactly like you did, but put an exclamation mark at the start of it. So now we can actually see this working, kind of. So if we select our enemy, lock our inspector, and then change the inspector to debug mode, we can see down here this can see player property. Now we can interact with it because properties are non-serializable, but if we were to play the game and I select my player and drag it within range, it's not going to do anything because we haven't set the layers up. So let's do that. So if we go over to our layer, add layer, we'll add a player layer and we'll... Why is it not letting me do that? I have no idea why it did that, but for some reason I can't add anything into layer six or layer seven. Never mind, that doesn't matter. So now we have two layers. We have a player, which is going to be our target layer, and an obstruction layer, which obviously is going to be our walls. So let's go into our wall, select the obstruction layer from that, select our player, and select our player layer from that. Now if we go to our enemy, we'll be able to see we have our target layer set to player and our obstruction layer set to obstruction. So this should work now. So let's grab our player, bring him in, and there we can see that our can see player is set to true. That is not ideal. We shouldn't have to go into the debug mode just to see if this is working. So if you're happy with that, then tutorial over, you have a working system. Now we're just going to add a quick gizmo at the end just to show us the radius and the field of view. All right, so what we can do, we can jump back over into our field of view script and we'll just add a private void on draw gizmos. Now on draw gizmos is only going to fire in the editor and this is where we can actually draw any of our custom gizmos over the top of the scene UI. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to set my gizmos.color equal to color.white and we're going to draw the radius around the enemy. And to do that, we're going to use unityEditor.handles.drawWireDisk. We're going to pass in our transform.position as the center, vector3.forward as it's normal, and then we'll pass in the radius value. So now we should be able to see that working immediately. If we hop back over into Unity, we'll see, there we go. We have this white ring, so that is our radius. So now let's get working on doing the actual angle. And there's gonna be a little bit of maths in this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a private vector to direction from angle. Now this is just gonna be a little utility function for us to use and it's going to take in two parameters. It's going to take in a float, which is the Euler Y value, and another float, which is going to be our angle in degrees. Then what we're going to do, we're going to add our Euler Y, Euler Y, don't shout at me, to our angle in degrees. So angle in degrees plus equal Euler Y, and then we're going to return a new vector two, which is going to be mathf.sin, angle in degrees times by math f dot degree to radian so uh, deg to rad comma math f dot cos angle in degrees multiplied by math f dot deg to rad now i'm not going to pretend to know what that means because i am at maths but 
this works. If you have an explanation of this, drop it in the comments below. So now we need to set our two angled lines. So that's going to be vector 3, angle 1, is equal to our direction from angle utility function that we've just written, pass in our minus transform dot Euler angles dot Z, and then for our first angle, it's going to be minus angle divided by 2, so half of the angle that we've defined in the inspector on the left side, and we can just copy that, pop that down here, angle 2 is going to be the positive angle divided by 2. And now we can actually get to draw in that. So we can set gizmos.color equal to something a little bit different. So we can set this to color.yellow. And now let's draw those lines. So that'll be gizmos.drawLine. Our starting point will be our transform.position. And our target for the line will be our transform.position plus our angle 1 multiplied by a radius. And then we can go ahead and copy that for the second line. And all we need to do is change this to angle 2. And then finally, if we can see the player, we'll just draw a green line over to that. So let's copy that, change this to color green, and then set gizmos.drawLine between our transform.position and our playerref.transform position. So now we should be able to see all of this working. If we head over into Unity, we'll select our enemy, lock the inspector on him there so we can always see this, and then drag our player around. Now if we go into the field of view, we're not going to trigger that green line just yet because our obstruction layer, this white box, is active. If we go just round it, now we see that green line. And if we leave the radius, we can no longer see the player. Or if we leave the angle, or if we go behind an obstruction layer. So that may have been a bit of a longer one, but I hope it's been useful for you. So now you can add 2D field of views into your games. Now what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to tap into that can see player property inside of that field of view. If it can, then you're going to want to either follow the player, chase the player, whatever you want to do with that, that is down to you. But you have that flag there now and you can do whatever you want with it. So again, I hope this has been useful and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching guys, if you like the content remember to subscribe to the channel for weekly Unity tutorials.